to me, all the drama surrounding Dallas makes for great headlines. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jerry's comments today regarding whether Wade and Jason Garrett would be here next season if they lose to the Eagles, I mean, even if he even assumed that or probably thought that in his mind, you know very well these are the things he had to say today going into this game. No one wants to hear that kind of stuff because then it would right. be really hard to beat the Eagles. But even with that said, and, and Steve, I know that we've heard this several times, and Julio, I know we've read it uh, probably better the 10, 15 times in the last couple of weeks. I still am not buying it. If if Dallas loses to Philadelphia on Sunday afternoon, if they lose in the first round, I don't care if it's against Minnesota or Chicago or whomever it might be, I'm telling you, I think they make changes. Yeah, exactly. Too many times of getting to that first round and not getting past there. It just can't happen anymore. Just, this is America's team. We've got the new stadium. There's a lot of expectations. Julio, you might disagree as a Cowboys yeah. fan. But I think I think they have the players in place to potentially win a championship when they're hitting on all cylinders and when they're healthy. Well, obviously, I mean, uh, obviously Jerry has took some time to put this team together and to give a lot of players some second chances as well, who who actually performed very well on the field despite their problems off the field. But I understand his point when he was going to be make a statement. Obviously, if you're answering questions, there's implications there. So I thought it was a very good way that he handled it. Yeah, and I'll just say this. And I don't know how you feel, Cowboy fan. And on the on the eve of one of the biggest, well, the biggest game of your season, you win and you get to continue. You lose, you're talking draft and probably a new coach. I'm not buying what Jerry Jones is selling me right now from the standpoint of having the coaches in place. Dallas is going into a stadium where it's going to be expensive just to drive by it. I mean, they might have a toll bridge right out in front of that thing in order to just be able to see it. And then if Wade does get let go, and we've been hearing Jason Garrett has been groomed all this year to take that that head head coaching position. But the point is, is he's made some big mistakes as well this year. From the 3-2-3, Cowboys are ready to be Super Bowl champs right after I go back to 1991 in my DeLorean. Uh, I always enjoyed the Back to the Future movies when Doc Brown would go in the DeLorean. I'm going to go in the future and find out how the Cowboys are doing because in one of those movies, remember, the Cubs yeah, won the yeah. World Series. They beat a team from Florida, as a matter of fact, yeah. before the Marlins were ever in existence. NBC has their decision. The NFL has their decision with a flex schedule. They decided to go with the AFC West matchup. It's amazing, though, how the Chargers finished November 4-8. and eight. <laughs> Went ahead yeah. and won those last three games. Though the last two times these teams have met, uh, the uh, Broncos have actually outscored the Chargers 71-23 to overall. But they smoked the Knicks last night. They were up 19 going to the fourth quarter against the Knicks. 120-107. to 107. By the way, Chris Wilcox, by the way, at the end of the game, made a very good point for the Thunder. that They're a really young team. They're just learning how to finish games. But the Pistons, they know how to finish games. What, 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 I think what, they're what? learning how to play games. Yeah. So, yeah, Ronnie Brewer steps up. And, and Nowitzki, oh, by ahead. the way, went ahead and uh, got ejected. He apparently got uh, tangled up with Harpering, and he actually had a closed fist, popped him in the mouth, but it was really an accident. But because it was a clenched fist, uh, automatic ejection. Yeah, I saw that. And that was really, I guess, maybe I'm being unfair in saying that it got a little bit chippy, but still, you have something like that take place, and you you didn't really sit down and watch the entire game, and you just saw the highlights, you think, boy, that might have got a little out of control. And there wasn't too many dunks in this game because uh, Denver was down by about 17 in the third quarter. They had to make about a, a season-high 15 three-pointers just to get kind of close, and then had that slam dunk from Kenyon. And obviously he was open because you know everyone was expecting three-pointers. Ken, Carmelo Anthony, by the way, due back Sunday when they start the road trip, Philly playing without Elton Brand again. But I'm up early, and I'm and I'm listening to Steve kick it with, with Chris Moore, and I hear Julio as soon as I get done in the afternoon with um, Kate, uh, Delaney. Kate Delaney. Yeah. It's uh, like, hey, I know that guy. Live, and I'm sitting there, I'm driving like, hey, honey, look, at Julio. That, that's Steve. You, you, you know the guys that are supposed to be talking with us. <laughs> but no, man, it was, it was fun to kind of branch out. You're very possessive, you know. I am. Uh, I have a jealous streak in me that I'll be uh, honest about. I'm the same way with callers, too. Like when I hear, the, when I hear Pete in Pittsburgh or the bread man called Zabe, it's like it breaks my heart. I'm like, what are they doing? Those so, are two of our eight callers. What are they trying to do to the show right exactly. now? Exactly. So you enjoying the Wii? Or what, what did you like playing uh, on that? That boxing God, is really hard. Boxing. You're exhausted after boxing. My my son, we we finally got a chance now. Uh, I I have been playing for the better part of 24 hours. Okay, 24 48 hours. My son got a chance to finally get at it today. It's amazing, Julio, the difference in energy from a 33 year old man to a five year old kid. Because whenever I'm done with a boxing match, I'm like, oh, 
Man, that's a workout. Meanwhile, my five-year-old kid has three matches down, and he's like, Daddy, I want to punch more. You, know, you got like, you to yeah. do that fitness test on there, which basically shows oh. what age you are physically. <laughs> no. You got you to do that. I'm usually about five years behind the current trend. So in about five years from now, I'll have an iPod, and I'll come on and be like, hey, guys, got an iPod finally. In about six years from now, I'm like, hey, finally got that Blu-ray. So I'm about, you know, three, four years behind when it comes to video Yeah, games. I was getting made fun of by Skippy, our, our producer there earlier. Is that, is that uh, what we're going with, Skippy? Yeah, Skippy, the it, that's what we like call that. Kyle, yeah. Skippy. I, I like Kyle. I, like I was that. mentioning how at a certain uh, fitness center across the street that there's no radio reception. He's like, that's so old school. You take a radio to, to work out? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I want to hear I want to hear some of the people in town, you know? <laughs> Let's get back to that uh, conversation that Fricky had the last segment before the hour was <laughs> up. he had black and white TV until yeah. what, he was eight? Yeah. What are you doing? What is that? Is that a Walkman? What are you doing with that, Julio? I can see that conversation now. I don't care if it's for money because if there's one thing I've learned in boxing, 90% of it is for money anyway. Yeah, you're not going to fault a guy. I mean, if he owes that much money, he has to come out of retirement yeah, to go hey, ahead and pay not? it. I mean, the, the, nevertheless, in boxing, the prize money is still a lot bigger than UFC. Absolutely. Oh, and, and the pay-per-view money has been yeah. a little bit bigger, too.